Hey there, everybody. Welcome in to episode 34 of the Fused Relativity Podcast. Coming at you once again Friday night. Uh, kind of Friday nights with Fused Relativity kind of rolls off the tongue. Yeah, a nice uh, Halloween ghost there for oh, in the uh, opening. Definitely not Kirk's birthday. Oh, no. It's... <laughs> Wait. I'll Come on. Still, we're, you should we're, still we're, send me a... You, it, look, you can give me a gift, but sure, if it's not my birthday. But uh, yeah, so but ghost, I was I was I saw the I wanted to uh, applaud the the but I'm like if it's a ghost and you boo it, is that cheering or heckling? I don't know. Is it you know if you boo a ghost, insult compliment? I suppose it depends on if you do a better job than the you know than said ghost could do of booing. If you show up, said ghost, then it becomes, okay, yeah, okay, this is my job. Back off, buddy. Yeah, pretty much. So, I guess it's just all relative to, uh, maybe, in, maybe it's just however that, go- however that ghost got there. Like, if it's a pissed off ghost, then that makes sense. If it's a, you know, it's a jolly ghost, it, it could go either way. He could let it slide. Yeah. So I, I've got no no input on this. <laughs> well, John, I did just throw out that uh, <clears throat> that new emoji thing that you put up. Yes, we do have emotes now, which for most people won't mean too much. But I put out all three. Uh, I'm. Very new to all of this Twitch stuff and emotes and yeah. These will probably and more than likely change, but I just thought they were interesting to start with. Yeah, I think it's fun. All right, placeholder. Yeah. Well, Kirk, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. And uh, my name, Sweetness, uh, that is in honor of Walter Payton, because this is episode 34. As a kid, like Walter Payton, I grew up like right at the 85 Bears, which was just such a killer team. So it was kind of a letdown because no team was like as good as that. But Walter Payton was my favorite player just because you know, he never ran out of bounds. Like he was like a tough guy. You know what I mean? Like he would run the guy over instead of step out of bounds like a lot of guys do today. So and he only missed like one game his whole career. He was just like one of those uh, they call it like old school guys, you know, he was a bruiser. There's no doubt about that. And a little dude too. Not, I mean, he was like six. I mean, not even six feet, like one ninety or one eight. I mean, not a big, big dude. Yeah, I, I feel like if that dude ran at me, I would turn and run the other way. Yeah, I would just yeah get out of the way. That guy, <laughs> <laughs> wherever that guy is going, let's let him get there fast because uh, I don't want to impede him. Walter, we've been over this. I'm getting out of your way. Quit chasing me. Right, enough already. But you know what? Actually, I have st- my uh, my uncle. My uncle was a big Bears fan, and uh, I just I was talking to him, and he said he got a new bloodhound puppy. And uh, he told me he's a simple folk. He's a city. You know, he's a he lives in the sticks kind of thing. And they gave him all this medical information about his puppy, and they told him like what the the bloodhound's blood type was. So do you want to do you want to know what the bloodhound's blood type was? Yes. It was type O. <laughs> I, I was trying to figure that one out. Negative. Uh, you know, my uncle agreed. It makes sense. He does it all the time. Clearly, it's in his blood. Hashtag. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come on. A hashtag for the kids. Right? Keeps it hip. Keeps it. Yes. That's that's <laughs> what they're doing these days, Kirk. Come on. I thought of that today, and I was like, that's uh, Come on. Type O. <laughs> that's just stupid. That's Yeah, it's good, though. I like it. That yeah, was a I, good I think, one. I think Democrats and Republicans could agree on that. You know, <laughs> no, no, that's that, that'll unite the country. Not a bipartisan issue on on that right. one. If you can be offended by that joke, God, I'm impressed. I'm almost be like, damn. Yeah, well, good, good. You know what? If you could be offended by it, go ahead. Well, John, before I ask you how you're doing this week, I wanted to steal a little page out of your book. Yeah. And I wanted to complain about work for a second. Sounds everybody right. has Yeah, everybody has bad weeks. This week happened to be a particularly crappy week. 
So I just thought I would uh, throw that out there and say, hey, sometimes work sucks. Most of the time work sucks. But yes. Yes. But hey, I get to stop for about 30 minutes and play guitar with Kirk every day almost. So that's kind of fun. That's an odd, come on, an odd perk. That's an odd job perk to have. You know, most people in offices don't get to have a jam session, I imagine. Probably not. But it's just like, it's like, it's just using a different part of your brain. I think as you get, you know, your job, your routine, you're organized, you're scheduled, you're and then you pick up a guitar and you can just kind of go boo 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 And as I, I think that's the key. It's just using a, a, a different part of your brain. So the routine part gets to relax and rest. So when you back at it, you're, I don't know, almost refreshed, right? Nah, you... you I could see that, but also I'm usually like tired after that. I'm like, man, I don't want to go back to work. I'd rather be playing guitar. Well, yes, work is less fun than guitar. Yes, that's... <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's nice when whenever you leave, you're stomping like a four year old. By the way, I don't want to go back to work, <laughs> which I thought was very mature for my age. Yes, <laughs> right, you'll grow out of it someday. <laughs> At least you didn't you didn't flail yeah. on the ground. You just stomped. It's all right. He's only about halfway to retirement. Right. Almost there. <laughs> almost. Well, John, how are you doing this evening? I had a headache for the last week. And, yeah. I, and I've experienced a new sensation, which I which is odd. General tiredness. <laughs> General, and, and, right? was... Yes and no. Okay. So what's weird about it is, like, I full out yawned at work, which you know most people are like. Oh, that's not that odd. Kind of for me, it is. Granted, I had like I'm assuming the nicotine was the part thing that was you know like driving my not being tired. Well, yeah, doesn't nicotine isn't? I've never. It's a stimulant. Uh, it, yeah. It, 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 it peps you up. So yeah, w- without it, it seems like you'd be. It's almost like if you stopped uh, drinking coffee or tea, right? They're just like there's a there's a pepper up or missing. Well, and that's that's the thing that's that's definitely switched. Like I've started drinking coffee. Like I drank coffee every now and then. Um, usually I drink like a monster in the morning, which it, 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 it lasts for about two to three weeks until I'm like I just like. I get that, like, I really want a monster, and I drink it, and then by the end of, like, three weeks, I drink, like, half a can, and I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> but, like, coffee. I have started drinking a ton of coffee again. I think I've had, like, three cups today alone. Well, yeah, they just say you're, you, you're replacing just one addiction with another. Oh. So, you know what I mean? You just got, you're, you're filling the, the filling the space that the routine used to take is now, there's a new opening, and you, it looks like you've auditioned coffee. Maybe your body's just saying after these last five years of you not sleeping, hey, buddy, it's time well, to get some sleep. You're probably not wrong. I I would admit. But I, I've i kicked the caffeine habit before, too, though, because, and Chris can attest to this, back when I was a firefighter, I used to drink two liters of Code Red, which is you know, Mountain Dew, yeah, a night. Like, I, I would go buy a two liter of Code Red and finish it before, you know, while we were playing Halo in the fire station. That's the key to your raccoon eyes. Well, it's, sure. it's part of it, yes. Uh, but then, like, soda. I, like, both me and my wife, we massively drank soda. I would do two or three cans a day. Um, and I, I just completely switched that out with water. Obviously. There you go. Yeah, much, not much better. Yeah, not easy, but not nearly as bad as kicking nicotine. Um, even my wife is kicked soda, kind of. Well, and it's once you get away from it too, it's like it, and if you you stumble back into it, like I don't. At least for me, like with fast food or soda like that, my body goes no, 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 ugh, no bad. Yeah, you know what I mean. Once you get away from it, you're kind of almost I, like it, you're free of the grip a little bit. I can't even finish a soda most of the time. Uh, like if I buy a, a twenty ounce. I'm really feeling like I want a soda. I'll get about halfway through and just not finish it. It's a lot of sugar. It's yes. very sweet. It's too much sugar. That's just, that's unhealthy. You guys are talking like Chinese to me. I don't know what you're saying. Drink water. 
I do drink water. I drink a lot of water, but I also drink soda and energy drinks and pretty much any liquid that you put in front of me. So yeah, well, I mean, in I drink upwards of a gallon, gallon and a half a day. Kind of depends. Liar, to... prove uh... it. I don't believe you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, pee, pee right now. I bet you can't. Pee right now. I, if you, <laughs> well, on the flip side, I have a decent control of that due to you know the fact I drink so much. My my water bottle at work that I keep at work is sixty four <laughs> ounces, and I usually drink two of those a day. Chris was laughing. You said doo doo. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> um. And yes, John, I I also carry a two gallon jug with me during the day, and I usually finish most of it. So, yeah, it's... I, I understand that, but I also really like sugar water too. So that's See, my point. Yeah, no, I I get it. I'm trying to get myself back into tea myself, but like my kids will drink tea, no problem, and not like sweet tea, like straight regular tea. Huh. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I did that. And I'm proud. Well, I like tea, too. Yeah, but, but I'm assuming yeah. you like a little bit of sugar or honey or something in it? Nope. No. Well, I mean, if you look at our mom, it, it makes sense. We had a lot of tea growing up. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, we've been talking about we've been talking about things for the last five minutes that will theoretically kill you, <laughs> and I I figured I would segue into our topic for the tonight. Our title of our episode is "It's the End of the World in a Billion Years," and I feel fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of takes the pressure off a little bit. And so is the, the reason that we went with that title and <clears throat> kind of what we want to talk about this evening, and I don't, I'm assuming you guys can agree, but in my feed the last couple of days and probably weeks, I have seen lots of stories about people focusing on the death of the earth and the solar system within the next billion years. You know, everything... I, I've seen a lot of stories about, oh, well, you know, the sun's going to be gone in a billion years because it's going to burn out. Or all Earth's oxygen will be gone in a billion years. And my my question and my comment on the whole thing was, why are people so focused on this right now? Humans likely won't last past, like, another 6,000 years. So I, your point is very valid. I think your algorithm is also just trying to send you a message, just <laughs> trying to get rid. It's like Chris, if you could just, just. I mean, it's leaving. So if you if you want to go ahead and leave early, it's all right. You know, you're not missing much. I th I think the Earth is trying to just shove you along. <laughs> that, that was kind of mean. <laughs> that the, was, the, the Earth wasn't there. It that wasn't. It was wasn't. It's not me. It's the Earth. Just saying. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and I I can come uh, back Chris up because I have seen a few few videos that had similar things of like, oh, the Earth's going to be dead in like a thousand years. But those are more, like I follow a bunch of astronomers, so it makes sense I would get those. Yeah, that seems like space talk. I mean, yeah. that, that seems like it would fit. Well, and I don't know if it's just like a lazy news cycle right now where there's just not a lot to talk about, so people are kind of cruising through just, oh, well, let's talk about doom and gloom of the Earth decaying See, and over the next you know there are way more interesting ways that we're all gonna die that are much closer than the sun going <laughs> out we have a super volcano that is in the middle of the u.s yeah and there's constant threat of asteroids there yep. is can i just say know. a super volcano i don't understand how they fight crime you <laughs> know what i mean if you're a super volcano it just seems like you just hurt am i right Maybe okay. It, back maybe to what were you saying? Villain. It could be the super villain. Kirk. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll go with that. All right. Comic book nerds, go. 
<laughs> make, hey, make, well, make it happen. So I, I send say, you to do my bidding. <laughs> call in Mr. Freeze, Silver Surfer. Uh, I was going to say, if, if the super volcano is the, uh, the villain, who's the hero? Uh, Ant Acid. No. Um, <laughs> preparation H. That No. Okay, no. Burning. Ow. Okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> So, yes, John, I agree with that, too. You know, there is many other pressing things that we could be looking at. And I, I kind of just got lost in thought on it over the last couple of days because we have a lot of issues going on here now that seem more relevant. And there's also a... To us, yes. The planet, no. Well... Yeah, suppose you know, uh, climate change would be the biggest thing that people are trying to combat right now, and it could be that these stories and and articles are based in root with climate change. But uh, as as we're you know everybody's talking about going to Mars and we got to colonize Mars and this and that and you know it just seems like we could be focusing our efforts other places rather than when the sun's going to burn out in a billion years. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a level of not giving a shit right now that's happening. But I think the fantasy of, oh, the Earth could end in a billion years, I mean, that, that, that's something that's known. It's like the sun will eventually die. When the sun goes bye-bye, so does the Earth. So... I. I well, it just it seems like lazy journalism to me because it's something that is way yeah. off in the future, so you can't get fact checked. And also, a you don't have to come up with any solutions or they and they're working on it or something. No, it's a billion you know, years down the road; it's going to happen. So it's just it's like clickbait. It's just well, that's and that, what it that's is. a good it's point. Easy. It's it's not even that you have to fast check because it's true. It will happen. It will be a billion years. Will it be two? Could it be ten? I mean, it's possible. Right, but there's, there's not, there's not going to be a John Stewart a billion years from now who's going to play the clip. Uh, we're still here, bam, ha, ha, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, uh, but it, you know, and theoretically, it could be a month from now, but nobody nobody knows that for sure. I mean, you would think we would have a decent inkling that we're all about to die, but yes, some sort of alarm, some sort of buzzer. <laughs> well, and that, that was eh, eh, something. That was that was part of the thing was. There was a video I saw that was like, oh, NASA missed uh, an asteroid that, you know, came out of the sun. Or, you know, they, they just missed one that came close to Earth. But the, the reality is there's a ton of stuff that we have no clue of. We're tracking a lot, but there's a lot that could just come in and blindside us. Like, And speaking of that, because you said it, I was... <laughs> Uh, the last time they said, you know, they said, oh, there's a asteroid that's zooming by Earth and it's going to be a near miss. You know, in, in astro astrological terms, a near miss could be like. It's you know, like a million a miles. miles. Yeah, like a million miles away. It's not close. Well, it's close. Spatially, so it is close. Just a bit outside. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, just. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just going to say, when you're talking about, you know, uh, let's say 10,000 miles away from Earth, and they're saying it's a near miss, in my head I'm like, hey, is it really that near? That's like that Proclaimer songs. You said 10,000 miles? <laughs> I wouldn't walk 10,000, right? Come on, oh. you remember that one? Or is it 5,000? 5,000. Damn it. I cut it. I, you know what? With inflation, I doubled it. It's all right. <laughs> it, it was back then 5,000. Now it's 10,000. That was the remix. All right, back to space. <laughs> you, see my, you see my point, though, right? Is that I, I just don't understand at this juncture why we're talking about, uh, you know, these types of things, especially when people are giving the space administrations a lot of crap saying, why are you guys looking at going to Mars when there's lots of problems to fix on Earth? You know, I feel like the sun dying out in a billion years is a problem that billion years from now people should probably think about. I think Kirk hit the nail on the head, though. It's it's for views. If you have, oh, the Earth is going to die, and then in the, the 
body of the text in a billion years when the sun goes out, you're going to get people to click on it. It's you see that everywhere. Like any news site you go to is going to have those. Oh, see what's legal in Colorado now. Bullshit articles. Right. It's, well, and, and like, and you said, you said the reason you're seeing all of these because you you're clicking on them. Like I haven't, I, like you said, they're not nowhere in my news feed is anything telling me anything. The world's going to die. That's just yours. Yeah. Well, well, not all, not all of it. I click on. I've clicked on a couple, but it, that's know. all it takes. That's the sad part. You know what I mean? It's just like one or two, and then they just. Sl- it's like it's just a slow trickle. It just slowly bleeds. You'll get one, and like, oh, hey, that that the the interviewer guy in that clip is in another clip, and then it goes just. It's just you kind of snowballs. I don't know. It's just like a, it's like a drug. It's a weird algorithm tar pit drug. Yeah. Well, in the, the, uh, you know, the sun, we know that like there was a, uh, what are the solar storm that hit us last week? I think. Anyway. Yeah, because we were talking about it last week. Yeah. So the solar storm hit, well, you know, they made a big deal about how the solar storms could take out Earth. And, you know, I it just, I understand the clickbaity side of it. But, but it's it seems... also not wrong, because a significantly powered solar or storm could wipe us back to the Stone Age. Correct. Well, not the Stone Age, but... That'd be like home for me. Ah, uh, you Wait. say that. The Stone Age? You guys lived yeah. in the Flintstones? <laughs> yep. See, the problem with it is, Chris, you are living in the middle of a, a suburbia. I was trying to think of the correct word there, but suburban didn't sound right, because that's, that's a vehicle. <laughs> that's the car. Right? Yeah. yeah. But you live in the middle of an urban neighborhood. You are not capable of walking to where it is possible to forge and hunt. I'd figure it out. <laughs> yeah, See, he's like, yeah, I, I could kill something. I could shoot something. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> don't don't challenge him. <laughs> the neighborhood watch is going to get out of control. Uh, yeah, Chris, sh- stop shooting people. Hey, I'm just trying to forage. I'm just trying to hunt. <laughs> well, I would assume it'd be more prairie dog related wherever he's at. Oh. No. Ra- I... Rabbit, squirrels. Stuff like that. No, there is plenty of deer in the very close vicinity of me. So yeah, but in respers, like I'm, I'm a mile away from the mountain. So yeah, you I don't know why I'm, I'm completely. <laughs> you have exponentially <laughs> more deer, but in the same light, I do not foresee a big solar storm taking no. out the earth. You know, and well, I and... think that. The other well, I just thing want to is... say the reason you're a mile away from the mountain is the mountain has a restraining order on you, which is weird. You're the only <laughs> all those, person. All those prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to call it Mount Prostitute pretty soon, but... Oh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but, anywho, the, the thing with the Earth is it is massive and it's mostly water. Like, even... Uh... Like, a solar storm that hits us is obviously going to hit us one side, and at least half the planet would lose potential. And that's the other thing. Even if it was worst-case scenario and a solar storm hit us and EM'd all the side that hit, the other side of the planet's still going to have everything, in theory. So there will still be... Yeah, but one, one side would be pissed about all the international minutes they bought. Well... That's not even a thing anymore. I don't think. All, what have all, I been? All what have I been? Oh, good. What have I been buying then? Who the? Who are you calling? That's international. It. It's just in case. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you haven't been talking to Kim Jong Un, and that's why things are getting dicey. Is it? Uh, screwing it up. I still thought international minutes was like a thing. That's, no, that's my I, fault. You probably don't need a phone card anymore unless you're in prison. I think that's how it works. 
Yeah, I was going to say, like, a lot of things. I, I I mean, granted, this is stuff I've seen in my feed this last week, but it was a lot of people talking about how, you know, back in my day, I used to buy minutes and SMSs and, you know, shit that makes you feel old. Yeah. Which I remember, I remember those days. Uh, I have a story about that too. That's like uh, there was a point in time where like nights and weekends were free. Yeah. So you'd, like, you'd, oh you'd... yeah, after like seven or after nine. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. I don't know. We we've got <laughs> nothing, some... nothing more <laughs> fascinating than old guys reminiscing. Sing about cell phone minutes. Well, oh, that was really <laughs> so I'll I'll share Riveting. my story real quick because I know we are off track and we're talking about cell phone minutes. So we were talking uh, last week. It was flurring a little bit on Thursday, and when I started working where I at work, I was the youngest person there. Granted, this was only like eight years ago. I am now in like the middle. Closer to the the oldest. Um, well, we were talking, and some of my coworkers were excited that it was you know the snow was falling. Except it was sunny out, and as I'm sure at least Chris knows, um, Kirk has probably been here long enough to know that if it's snowing and sunny, it's it's not gonna do anything. Right, that's like a yeah. It's not even gonna hit the ground. It's already yeah. melted by the time. Yeah, it's not sticking. So You're not the, going sledding. They were they were all excited, and I was like, yeah, the last big snowstorm we've had in the, the fall was back in, like, 97 when it closed the entire city. And they were like, oh, I wasn't even born then. Nah. <laughs> I, I was just like, oh. It, it doesn't feel that long ago, because I can remember that snowstorm. I'm sure Chris can, too. I distinctly remember a snowstorm that we predicted because we said it wouldn't happen. Well, it was... I so only you, re- jinxed, you jinxed yourself. It's not gonna... There's no way. Boom. No, remember at the beginning of this show, me and we were all like, eh, it's not gonna do anything. And oh, it like that's right. <laughs> I, I do remember that. We were talking crap about it, and then it decided to drop like two feet. So. That seems like a very Colorado weather. It's like, oh, really? It's just, I don't know, it's just sort of the, uh, I hate to call it the crazy girlfriend of weather, but just like, oh yeah, bam, just, I don't know, well, unexpected. And yeah, I remember that, because there was a TikTok that came out shortly after that that I saw of a uh, Colorado weatherman that was like, oh yeah, I predicted uh, rain, and he was in his backyard, and it's just like a foot of snow. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but But... <laughs> You know, going going <laughs> back once again, circling around to, to the death of the earth. The death of the earth. That's what we're we're trying to talk about here. <laughs> uh, you know, there's so many different things that could happen, right? You know, you could have theoretically all the water could evaporate, and we would have, you know, no more water, or all the oxygen could invert, and we'd lose our atmosphere. I mean. There's so many different things that could happen, but I don't know that they're necessarily something we should be focusing on. Right. I think the most common theory I heard is Kevin Costner makes uh, Waterworld 2 and everybody just leaves the planet. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I think is going to happen. Well, I mean, realistically, there is absolutely nothing we could potentially do to stop a cataclysmic event. And so why why worry about it? Don't worry, be happy. Bobby yeah, McLaren. like if if they predicted that Yellowstone was going to pop within the next year, there's nothing we could do other than you know flee America. A giant cork. If they thought of a giant cork, <laughs> has anybody thought of that? You know, are the you know the the fancy uh, water bottles that has like the metal clasp and the little. I mean, that's got to be. I mean, if you put that on a volcano, that's solid. But I mean, yeah. even, even... <laughs> you guys are the worst improv people. Like, there's no support. There's no <laughs> let's spitball this around. It's hey, how about this? Silence, crickets, any hoodily doodles. Back to adult talk. Thanks a lot, pale guy and smelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I, I will admit I'm not I'm not improv good. No I, well, improv. Well, uh, well I, that's a that's a valid thought. Something something <laughs> uh, just just blank. It's it's odd that through audio I can hear blank stares. That's not right. Well, that's unhealthy. I I just I didn't see where you were going with the metal. I just I didn't get it. See, and I was just picturing a cork going into the ground. Right. What's wrong? So, and then you, you hammer it down with a big, big hammer. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know why I make it's cork wouldn't make that noise. <laughs> that was that was a bad. See if we would have sound effects, John. Okay, now still trying. <laughs> well, I feel like my topic of the evening was uh, a little deadpan. Like it got. Uh, it had potential, but it also, I think, got dismissed early enough to where it's kind of like, eh. You're saying the distraction of our homeland didn't have legs yeah. just, as, as, a, as a topic yes. to, uh, to bounce around. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I think we're all under the same assumption of just like, why? Yeah. Why are we talking about this? It's irrelevant. Well, Quit algorithming all over the place. And... You know, that kind of stuff. Right, because, I mean, there's just, there's no pro-argument. No one's going to say, I'm for dying. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know, there's, uh, and it's just, yeah, it's too far down the road. People can't plan what they're going to do in two weeks, let alone a billion years. Yeah, very fair point. I don't even know what I'm doing for dinner tomorrow. And we, we honest, like, I'm, you know, barring any kind of weird technological advancements, we won't be here in a billion years, so... Yeah, you'd have yeah. to eat a lot of broccoli. Or, uh, even if you eat a lot of health food, you're not making a billion. Get in uh, Bezos' good side. Oh, yeah, Fountain of Youth. I keep forgetting about that. But then you'd have to hang with Bezos for longer, so is it really worth it? Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Well, it's like, you know, like, okay, here's the thing. Like, as a last meal, imagine if you have a last meal and the guy asks for um, the Olive Garden's uh, limitless pasta. So that's just a, that's a fate worse than death, right? Because it never ends. You just die eating <laughs> Olive Garden pasta. Ugh. Hey, if it's Alfredo, I'm on board. If the chicken's okay, the breadsticks are awesome. That's I don't the... even know if I've eaten at Olive Garden, so I, I don't have a say in this. It's are Olive people... Garden and like, uh, the breadsticks. It's like the breadsticks and then the rolls at Red Lobsters. Those are the best, so I could hashtag breadwinners. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like Texas Roadhouse. Uh, they have some pretty good rolls with some apple cinnamon butter. It's, yeah. That's where it's at. I, I would also have to say, the last time I was at Texas Roadhouse, they didn't have apple cinnamon butter. So, again, completely lost. We are getting know. so much hate mail from gluten people <laughs> who are allergic to it. Like, And you, you know how angry they are? They're writing they're not even emailing. They're so angry they're going to find postage. That's how much they hate <laughs> us right now. <laughs> I tuned into this podcast, and uh, all they talked about was bread. The I weirdest was, podcast. I've, I've never been hungrier and angrier at the same time. <laughs> it's funny. I, I could probably do a whole episode about bread. Oh, here's that. Uh, there's, uh, there's bread winners, and then there's bread losers, but there's no bread ties. Because there's no way you're not going to eat your bread tie. It's just right under your face all day long. Just picture, you know, a bread tie. You can, like, dunk it in marinara. There's no way you're not eating your bread tie. Yeah. Uh, that was, a, okay. Sorry that took a second, Kirk, because you said bread tie. And all I could think was I, the little twisty thing that goes on the end of the bag. That almost It's a stretch. Was... Right. It's, it's a puzzle. Well, and, and how often, or that, that would be a good question. How many people actually put those back on the the bread? Because I for sure don't. No, you you spin it and tuck it under. Yeah. Kirk. Yeah, it's just it's like a necktie. I'm just picturing. Yeah, just hanging there, a power tie. <laughs> you got you got a job interview, so, and if you you know, you get the job, then you celebrate by eating your tie, and then you're like, oh, that was my <laughs> luck, lucky tie, and then you never get to leave that job again. It's nightmare. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah what you can't leave oh god get me out of here 
every job I look like, every job I get, I enter and I look at as like an escape room. It's not healthy. <laughs> How do I get out? Got to be a way out. Well, switching over, John, uh, I guess we did. We can talk about the uh, SN twenty if you want to. We we can discuss the static fire. It did static fire, but it static fired its vacuum engine. Oh, which was how a did lot... I miss that? Huh? I says, how did I miss that? I thought it was the regular engines. No, no, no. It static fired the uh, the vacuum, which is it's it's just the the regular Raptors with a different uh, uh, bell on it. That's why it Still looked a lot different. At least to me, it looked a lot different. I still don't really necessarily understand the difference between a normal rocket engine and a vacuum engine. So, my my basic understanding is it's just all about uh, expansion. Like at sea level, the gas isn't expanding nearly as much, so you can have a, a smaller uh, nozzle. But once right, you get well it... that that and the vacuum one scares the cat. <laughs> okay, go. Too I wonder, maybe if they want to make a more efficient vacuum engine, they should speak with Dyson. And nope. now Chris uh, experiences the blank stare. Dirt devil. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hoover. Anyways, so they have vacuum. So they they static fired the vacuum engine. Yes. Um. Uh... They also, the FAA, was it the FAA? I'm pretty sure it's the FAA, uh, put out the public comments for the uh, environmental on SpaceX's arm and, or tower and arms and all of that. And it's, of made of, it's made of nuclear waste, so <laughs> they don't think it's going to pass. <laughs> Fingers, they're like, Ooh, I don't think it's... Well, it's... It's more the like environmental assessment of if we allow SpaceX to do this, what's going to be the impact? And I heard like birds. I heard are big, you know, kind of the like, wildlife yeah, around there throwing it, off their pat migration patterns, like stuff like that. Well, I don't know so much about magnet. Uh, I know there's endangered, or not necessarily endangered, but there's species on that beach that they want to protect. And the other big thing was the fact that if they're going to launch as much as they are, that beach is pretty much closed. And there's, there was also a concern over methane, I think. Yeah, but it's natural gas. <laughs> it's not, but I mean, it is a natural gas. Once again, I think that was your um, algorithm. It might just be you. Your whole area is <laughs> concerned about <laughs> well, and there was a lot of concerns about, you know, what if this, what if that. It, it's And that was the whole point of the uh, environmental thing, is that it's they're looking to see if there's valid concerns that they missed. Um, so, it, it just depends. I mean, realistically, what's going to happen is if the FAA says, nope, you can't do it, they're going to put everything on the, the oil platforms and go into international waters and just say, screw the FAA. Which I that's, still remain, that's a very smart thing to do is just go international waters and then nobody can tell you shit. So I think it's, it would probably still be murky for SpaceX because there's treaties about, or especially federal laws about using American made rockets you know, shipping them internationally. It, I'm assuming that could also be very dicey, but it, it's hard to say. They got like Teamsters. They can't get, you know, no rockets can leave without us getting a little piece. Well, it, it's like, yeah, Elon can't say, you know what, I'm going to go sell my rocket design to Russia right now or China. That the That is absolutely not allowed by American law. Huh. That's interesting because I mean, there's nothing uh, nuclear, a weapon, or but is that how they're just viewing it? It's like, it, it, yeah, it it's, could eventually be used as a weapon, so we have to protect it. Yeah, I'm assuming that's part of the reason. 
Because we can hmm. buy Russian rockets. There's nothing stopping that. We just can't sell American rockets. I mean, is that it, just? I mean, it, it seems a little paranoid. Is that just me? I mean, no, it's uh, it's probably paranoia. Uh it, it definitely sounds like something Cold War born that stuck around. Yeah, an old lady cr- clutching her purse is going, "Oh, those Russians will explode us." Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think if the because I the last I looked, a lot of the launches have been pushed back to next year. So or if they keep SpaceX or I think just in general, they've kind of you know said no more rockets for the rest of the year. We're gonna push you back to next year. Well, no, that's I mean, there's some like Boeing got pushed back because it's Boeing and their sh- shit sucks. The reason those things failed was humidity. It was too humid in Florida. Go figure. <laughs> that's, that's what Florida's known like when I that's in the top three when I think of Florida is humidity. Yeah. So SpaceX still has a bunch of Starlinks they've got planned. They've got three for just November. And they've got the crew mission in a week and a day. Um which which is annoying because it's gonna launch at midnight on what is that? Saturday. And then uh they've got one potentially still this month. Uh, in October. And they've got a few spattered throughout November, December. I would assume a lot of the launches that were canceled were ones that were... Because I know the Starship uh, mission, the one, the test flights for like the the orbital launch of the Starship I think is pushed to next year. No. Elon said he's try- they're going to do it next month. Or they're going to try and do it next month. Oh, well, they had said that the FAA had pushed them to 2022. Well, they can say a lot of stuff, but it's it's Elon. He's going to try and do it in as soon as possible. And, and this could be new information, because the last I saw it from... Yeah, this was 11 hours ago. The first orbital launch attempt will be next month, pending regulatory approval. So, All right. so he might just be pushing the envelope trying to get him to fast track it. Yeah, and that's what they're going to do because, like I said, he, he's not a big fan of the FAA anyway, so... Well, it seems like if you're a billionaire, you probably don't have a lot of patience. You probably... You're, you're, you're kind of a go-getter. you kind of like, let's go, boom, boom. You know what I mean? You're not really sitting around waiting for people to give you the okay. You're probably oh. just attacking it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. at that point, it's, it's all about time. His I still time, think he, uh, he should. He, I still think he should just go to the moon, because I feel like they could get some pretty solid video while they're up there. Because it's you know the distance isn't that far. I think it would be a, it'd be a really cool thing to be able to watch. Well, and that's yeah. Like I I I feel that's gonna be something he does. He's if dear moon. St- I know it's been. They were planning on Falcon Heavy, and it might be Starship now. I don't. There's some weirdness around that. But if Dear Moon goes, I could absolutely see them at least flying around the moon getting videos, which would be amazing. And since it's SpaceX, you know, they, they do not shy away from broadcasting everything. Right, which is what I'm looking... That's what I really want to see, is I want a video camera on Mars so that I can see what the astronauts see without actually having to go up there. You know what the camera is going to catch? It's going to catch someone trying to steal a package that was left on their doorstep. That's what's going to, it's going to be surprise everybody. <laughs> the old doorbell camera on this, this, this space. That's You know what? That's a committed thief. If he gets a rocket ship and a space, he, he deserves to steal whatever he wants. Right. Back me up. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> That guy's got gumption. Well, no, because like yesterday was the Hunter Moon, which was like a really bright, uh, essentially full moon up in the sky. And I I was looking at it, and you can see some definition when it's full and bright like that. Well, how cool would it be just to see what's actually, you know, what you're actually looking at every time you see the moon? You're, you know, it's like, wow, that's what I'm actually seeing. 
I think I picture like of sort of the moon and then in the foreground, like the background, like the earth, you know what I mean? So it's like, you're getting the picture of the, the moon that looks cool that you've seen, but just from a different with the earth in the background, I think that would be an awesome picture. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, well, that's, I, th I think let's, uh, let's jump over to Kirk's corner a little early, John, and then we'll go a little off topic after that. See if this all works. Whoa, whoa. I got to take some Dramamine. It always makes me motion. And we got a baseball bat? Well, it we fits have... in with last week's uh, corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then what is the, it looks, uh, I'm, I don't know, Orange Julius? What is that? What I, is I was going for like baseball beer. Oh, beer. Okay. So, okay. It looks a lot different here than it did when I was making it. It definitely looks like orange juice now. And did we lose a President Goose? Because like, there's only three. Was there a hunter? No, did somebody there's kill, four. kill Lincoln? There's, there's four, four beaks. There's four. Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. I had, I had to do the old man look forward squint thing. <laughs> so yes, you are correct. Um, all right. Well, cool. Hey, for Kurt's Corner, I haven't done it in a while, but I thought I would do um, another uh, stand-up comedy tip. Uh, just because, I don't know, during the pandemic, a lot of people, maybe, you know, everybody developed new hobbies. So if people were thinking about trying stand-up, just I did it for 14 years. And just the best tip I got is just have a good opening joke. Like I've seen a lot of brand new comics go up there and just you really want in the first 15 seconds, you want a punchline. You want a joke because what happens is if you have a if you once you get that first you say that first joke, like the crowd goes, oh, this guy speaks joke. And if you get a laugh, you calm down and then the crowd feels you calm down. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. all about. If you're if you're in the crowd, like an audience member is like, oh, if that was me up there, I would feel so horrible. So if they see you tell a joke and it doesn't land, then if you act like it didn't matter, they're like, oh, I guess it doesn't matter. So, you know, just kind of like it's so like I'll tell you two, two. Here's two of the opening jokes that I would use uh, for you know, when I was doing comedy. One of them was, uh, oh, I, I saw a mom feeding her baby and she was doing the airplane thing. Here comes the food. Brrr. The weird part was she was breastfeeding. Okay, <laughs> so boom, it's a it's setting it up. You have the picture. There's a there's a joke. It's it's you know it's clean. And that's another thing too. You want to be non offensive. You don't want to open with the abortion jokes right away. You know what I mean? You want to be likable up front. Um, and also that joke, if they're still with you, you can kind of keep going. You know, like um, you know the, the airplane joke. Um, and then, oh no, well, I'll skip that part. But like, here's, here's another joke. One of my other openers was, um, I, I had way too much to drink last night. Today I woke up in such a retarded state. And by that, I mean, Utah, but uh, boom. <laughs> and back then, I guess retarded somebody actually, I said that recently and somebody kind of quibbled about the use of retarded. And I was like, well, wow, it was a joke. But anyway, but so it's just, it, it's quick. Basically it establishes um that you speak joke like i said and that laugh you calm down completely and just um a lot of comics they'll see like their favorite comic like joe rogan or pat Oswalt or somebody and they'll, they'll see them kind of go for a while without telling a joke but it's like they've been doing it for 20 years and they've developed the crowd and a following so they've kind of earned that right like if you are pl you know plunk down 40 dollars or whatever to go to a concert to see joe rogan you're thinking uh, this guy's earned my trust. I'll I'm willing to go with him. But as a new, new comic, they don't know who you are. So in like, if they don't hear a joke right away, they'll tune you out. So that's just another thing. It's just that's the best advice I got. That's the there's once they like you, it's amazing where you can take them. But just have a quick 15 second joke with a clear punchline to win them over. Likable, self deprecating. There, that's what I got. Any any questions? make does that make sense i think uh that was very well said kirk what they and, and like because i i there was a comic and he had he first time he went up he had a or he just for two and a half minutes he ripped on helen keller and the crowd hated him because <laughs> right like rightfully yeah. so and he he limped off stage and i i just 
brought him over to me and I go, okay, okay, just, I don't know you. The first thing I know about you and I hear you say is you insult and shit on a blind, deaf, handicapped woman. What do you, th do I like you? Are you a good person? And I, I just go make them, make them like you first. I go self-deprecating kind of, you know, put yourself down, put it towards the end. And then I saw him six months later and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, he closed with that joke and it crushed because they liked him. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, once they like you, it's, it's almost at certain times you're kind of like, I can't believe you guys laughed at that. How dare you? How, how dare you guys laugh at the thing I said? I can't believe, but it's kind of fun. Like you can kind of just keep going until you lose them. And then the next time you tell that joke, you just stop where you had them. If that makes sense. Uh, right. Cause you can go too far. So it's always good to find the line. Well, and it's it, when you're right, when it's a new joke or you're just trying to figure it out, you you don't kind of know where the end is so that's kind of where the crowd will tell you you know where you just keep going and tell like okay they stop laughing there but um you know it's kind of nice just to have that's how you have to do it you know that's eventually the joke kind of peters out and then when it's a paid show you're like okay that's they're getting the the, the tried and true the tested stuff all right so yeah, there's some little comedy comedy class there i, I was nodding like... my head without realizing that yeah you can't see me nod my head yeah right we're all just sitting <laughs> there like, like yeah, yeah that's yeah. good good advice yeah your your neck clicking you're not that old yet you're not <laughs> if you're arthritic i could hear you click 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 oh he's nodding i can tell <laughs> <laughs> well very well said like i said kirk that was a weird statement but uh Always good to hear some comedy advice. Hopefully someone out there somewhere will take it to heart. And, right. uh, hey, hopefully the, the, just the world, a funnier place, or just the, the person who always try, thought they wanted to do stand-up, at least they, they tried it once, and they, they had a fighting chance. Yep. Kirk did it for a long time, so he's the, and he managed shows, so he, he's the guy you need to listen to, for sure. Right, but one of the uh, just open with a joke. It's, it sounds like stupid comedy advice. I can't believe I have to say this, but I'd open with a joke, not a dark one. A nice, likable, yeah, it's just a quick, likable one. Boom. Okay. So, is it? Are we going? Are we going off topic now? Yeah. We... we can just shoot on back over to our our podcast studio in the sky or space or. Okay. <laughs> Can we get like a like a window washer? Can we have like a squeegee guy who's like floating outside? Can we do that, John? <laughs> That'd be <cool>. possibly. <laughs> Depends how bored at work I get. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, who wants to go first? I think Maybe. I should go last because mine. I think mine is a. So you guys go first. All right, all right, all right, I'll go first. So my off topic this week is they seem to have found that Vikings were oh, the yes, first. Oh, yes, yes. Well, they were the first in North America. Yeah, I heard, I heard they, like, I think that, was it Canada that they landed in? Yes. Yeah, Newfoundland apparently is where they seem to have found them. Well, and that's where the site was found. And that's where right. one they, of the they, more popular. They beat Columbus by, they beat Columbus by a couple like hundred years, right? Yes. What the reason that I found this story interesting? I mean, granted, it's cool that the Vikings were here first, but also the way that they know that the Vikings were here first was because of radioactive trees. Yep. Huh. So apparently there was this really big uh, solar storm, Kirk, that sent a bunch of radiation to Earth. And all, at the time, all the trees soaked up the radiation. And so they can radio carbon date these trees and figure out that they came from a certain area. And that's how they figured out that the Vikings were here. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, they essentially took some wood that they knew the Vikings cut down because uh, the Native Americans didn't have uh, axes. 
they didn't have the, the metallurgy to make axes. So, yeah, they found wood that the Vikings cut down, compared it with the, uh, found the spot where the radiation was, and then counted the rings outwards. Wow. Oh. A little bit of science CSI there. Yeah. Yep. And that's, like they said, that was just the one that they found. There was plenty more along the coast that have been lost to time. Hmm. Well, speaking of that, did you hear the did you hear the uh, drunken Viking fans who um, they uh, they invaded the village in? <laughs> <sighs> sure. They just old old habits die hard. They just can't let it go. It's what they do. They're Vikings. All right. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I was, I was mid thought there, and then yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see if this works. Oh, a screen's dropping down. It's like a movie. You're going to show a movie. All right. So my off topic was, and I'll link the uh, the post in uh, chat here. But it's someone has uh, built the James Webb Space Telescope in Lego. And as of doing this, when he posted this, he wanted, um, he needed a certain amount of votes for Lego to consider making it an actual set. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's remarkable the amount of detail he's put into this. So wait, so Lego has turned, you can buy a box, a Lego box and make this. So that, that means Lego has a creators program where people submit their ideas. If it gets popular enough, they'll take a look into act making it into a production set. Okay. So the guy who made this, if you had a pale con contest <laughs> with him, who would win? <laughs> Uh, it'd probably still be me. Probably still. All right. You're, you know, I, mean, I like you're a little cocky about your paleness. I like that. But I, I mean, I have, I have two Saturn fives. I've got the lunar lander that I still have to build. Plus an ungodly I'm, amount of free Legos. I'm um, impressed amount by the ingenuity that he's showing. You know, he kind of did this all on his own. Yeah. The detail looks impressive too. It's uh, just very intricate. Yes, it's just crazy the amount of stuff it has, and I would imagine it would be a very, very, very difficult uh, set to build. I would still probably try and get it. Oh, so the guy's an astronomer. All right. Yeah. So well, this is I mean, what he, he this is what he does to like his when he wants to let his mind wander. He builds intricate Lego stuff because it's less complicated than what he does. Yeah, it, it's that's the thing with a lot of this is it's like he's. I'm just copying it so I can put it in chat here. Um, yeah. and a lot of these creator designs. I had a thought and I lost it, but a lot of these creators designs are you know just people that have that build Legos for fun. And a lot of them aren't exactly this thought out. Like most of them are just, um, there's programs that let you build in Legos without, you know, actually needing Legos. This dude actually built this in Legos. Oh, so people just design them on computers basically. Yeah. Okay. This guy, you know, full went full out. I'm sure some of them are, you know, they build them. Like I could probably come up with some impressive stuff with the amount of Legos I have, but, I, I don't have the time or patience for something like this. This is what this Lego guy went balls to the wall. That's <laughs> just an odd saying. It sounds odd. A little bit. But it applies. Yes. I just build as far up as I can and then knock it over. <laughs> <laughs> How long? You, come on. You let it sit there for like a week, a couple, at least a couple of days before you smash, right? Or is it immediate, no, it's like, immediate it's smash? Immediate. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> there's no savoring, there's no look, it's just, it's, and there's the last one, and Chris smash. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> You're like uh, Shiva, the, the, the creator destroyer. Create it, bam, it's gone. You're exactly like Shiva, I've been saying that for years. That's how I roll, Kirk. Yep. 
That's what you got the tattoo for. Yep. It's Shiva and then She-Ra. That's what you got on the other bicep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Kirk. So you 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 said yours is good. So let's uh let's hear I, what you got. I called my shot. So basically I saw so there's a story that's a new invention from Germany and it won a top prize in a contest and it is the testicle bath birth control that's oh essentially, i saw did you see this? this yes it, it, for those of you guys don't know basically i saw it there was a little video and it wasn't a real display it was an animation thing so it, it was it wasn't horrible but uh essentially picture an alexa that you just kind of cut in half and then smush down and then you fill with water then you plug in and it heats the water up and then ba- you, you, you put your balls in the water and it uses uh, ultrasound somehow to i don't know confuse your sperm i don't know it, like it zaps it so, well, like it, it lasts for a month you can't knock somebody up because the i don't know the sperm it, are confused well it's the heat too uh you, you heat it up too much and yeah you cook your sperm yes Escar spoot, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and, and, it, it was, and also to, to me, it's funny because you have to pay money for this to, 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 to bathe your balls for birth control. And to me, if you just um, not bathing your balls is the ber- best birth control there is. And then you don't have to spend <laughs> any money. Am I right? I mean, you yeah. say this, but Chris has two kids. Ow. Hey. <laughs> A little zinger from. And- from oh. John over here. Like at, at some point, he took a shower. I'm sure, you know. But that's it's just his normal funk. <laughs> well, uh, I'm a little skeptical because if it doesn't work, then you just have some really confused, slightly, uh, you know, dazed sperm running around. And uh, I don't so know. So it, it may it may create. Slow children is what you're saying. If if you, your sperm is confused, they're gonna make confused babies. I don't think that's no, how that works. I don't. I don't think so either. Uh, no. But I'm just saying. What if? What if the really good ones? You know. What if it's just the uh, mediocre ones or the the less than mediocre sperm that make it? Or what if the sperm is just they think they're in a jacuzzi in a spa and they just relax. They think they're at a nice, uh, you know. A nice spa. Well, hey, I mean, <clears throat> on the outside, it does seem like a very uh, practical male contraceptive to a certain degree without actually, you know, having to get a vasectomy or something like that. So, I mean, it's a novel concept, but seems uh, invasive. And I, 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 I want to point this up. It is, it is slightly on the disturbing side. Um, because I was like, ah, I wonder how much these cost. Because if I remember correctly, you could just buy them for home use. So I was looking, and there was an article that says, man wakes up in sauna, discovers his testicles are missing. And the picture is two raisins. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't want to fall asleep. No, there, actually, I saw no, there was no. like a timer. You can put your phone on, like, you know, yes, if you fall asleep. and No, I think okay. this, was, uh, this was someone went in and, you know, snip, snip, off. Again, it's Russian, so I don't know the, the validity of it, but just just from searching key terms that Kirk had brought up, that's what I found. Oh. So, so for the next for the next couple of weeks, you're going to be hit with a lot I, I, of I r- Russian vasectomies. <laughs> well, I don't want to think about that, comrade. Cut to come on, come on. <laughs> Don't have another red scare. Take him away. Okay. What a country. All right. Yakov Shmirnov. All right. Nothing. Yeah. Well, okay. Good story, Kirk. I uh, I did enjoy your off topic. Come on. You didn't want to follow testicle bath. Come on. Right? No, that's a hard one. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to try and one up the testicle bath. Cause that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, there, there's a testicle bath salt joke, but I haven't figured it out yet. Maybe next week. Maybe next week I'll have it together. Yeah, I feel like you should have had that one done already. <laughs> so, Jeez, sorry, Dad. <laughs> sorry, Ow. I just I, I just looked up, you know, I was looking on Reddit. 
the, the picture that this article used about the sauna is eggs boiling in water. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't inject that. Yeah, so the visual. The Trying visuals. to give people nightmares. <clears throat> Hard boiled huevos. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, and with that, well, I think we should just leave it on that. Hardball yeah. the huevos? Yeah, let's yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, right off we'll into just sunset. <laughs> right off and uh, wrap up episode 34 of the Fused Relativity Podcast. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. John, Kirk, anything to add? I'm assuming we're still playing Space Engineers tomorrow. Yes, we should be. Uh, we will be on tomorrow night, me and John, playing Space Engineers and uh, trying to... Well, we're on Mars, but we don't... We're I don't, kind of no, we, I, I think we need to start building a base on Mars to try and get back to Earth. Yes. Space Engineers, do you guys have you got your cheat code yet for the special protractor? I'm pretty sure John does somewhere. Yeah. That's a good joke, Kirk. <laughs> no, you got a pocket. You got a. You know what? The best pocket protector: a button. Just a button. Button protects <laughs> pocket. Just nothing falls out. Just button it. All right, we're rambling. We should go. <laughs> All right. Well, for John, Chris, and Kirk, uh, thanks again for everybody listening, and we will catch you next week. Go boldly, friends.